And a good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, director at WEIU. Today we're going to talk about a couple of subjects. We have Carolyn Cloyd and Gail Bainey in the uh, station. Oh, and Gail's <laughs> phone is going off. So, and so Carolyn, we're going to talk about Run for the Fallen, as well as the Coles County Historical Society's uh, Depot Museum. So um, there you go. So uh, we'll let Carolyn go first, and you can introduce kind of your part of this. Okay, so first of all, I work at the Mattoon Chamber of Commerce, but I got involved with the Run for the Fallen, the Illinois Run for the Fallen, 14 years ago when it started here in Charleston. And then I've been with the Coles County Historical Society for about a year and a half now, and we, uh, my friend Steve Thompson and I had put a woman's suffrage display in the museum, and when we took it out, we were, uh, well, we really didn't even have to think much about it. We, our heart is with our military, and so we did a military display there, so. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn and I just have become friends over the year, and as she says, we love veterans, and she's led me down many a path that I've enjoyed. The run for the fallen is very rewarding. Um, the historical display that we have up, is just full of treasures of our past and it's just been a great both are just very dear to our hearts well, let's start with the run for the fallen uh, you know when and where and and, and kind of what it is between the two of you okay so it's august 19th at the charleston high school track it's from 7 a.m to 1 p.m and we like to emphasize this it is not a fundraiser it is not political it is not competitive Participants can come at any time during 7 to 1, and they just they walk or run a mile for a fallen service member. And I'll let Gail talk a little bit about the, the cards that we, we create so that people know who they're walking or running for. Uh, every one of the soldiers' service members, Marines don't like to be called soldiers, so every <laughs> one of the service members has a card, and it has a short bio on it. Um, and a picture of who you're walking for. And like Carolyn said, you if you have a loved one or someone you specifically want to walk for, you can, you can. Otherwise, we'll just assign a random service member for you. The tracks, quarter tracks, so it's four times around, that's your mile. Charleston has a great big fireman's bell, and we uh, you plant a flag that we will provide for you and ring the bell, and we always say ring it so they can hear it up in heaven, and it's that's, that's really the whole event. It's, it's a very simple event, but it's very powerful. Uh, and we have a lot of Gold Star families come out. For example, there's been one guy who has come every single year. He's from the Tuscola area, I believe, and he walks because his uh, nephew was lost in Afghanistan, I believe it was. I could be wrong about that. It might have been Iraq. But he comes, and he will be one of the first people there, and he will walk the entire time. Oh, wow. Um, uh, we've had multiple... Um, Gold Star families. I have a name on the back of my shirt. It's Drew Ewells. The very first year there was a family named Ewells and they just found out about the event right before and they said we just heard we've got something going on we can't make it will someone walk for you know we want to know who walks for our son. So I took that on board put his name on the back of my shirt and suffice it to say the Ewells have been back every year since and now we walk with them there we consider them friends but wow. uh, we hope that it brings comfort to families like that. Because I think, you know, we, you, as life goes on, we, you forget about things, and you don't really mean to, but it's that one time a year where people can really remember their lost service members and stuff. So this has been four, this is the 14th event, correct? Yes. yes. Uh, so can you take us back to, you know, the, the origination and where the idea came from, you know? Yes, there was a young man named uh, Michael Cleary, and he was going to school in, he was from uh, Pennsylvania, and he, um, when 9-11 happened, he wanted to join up, but his parents talked him into stay, staying in school and graduating. After he got out, he signed up and he went over to Iraq. And it was, uh, I believe I, it was in 2004, it was 10 days before his tour was up. Oh, wow. He went out on a mission and his vehicle hit an IED and he and another young man were killed. So his mother was at home making Christmas cookies when they came and knocked on her door and said her son was dead. And so um, shortly after that, his friend who had been his roommate at college, John Bologna, he decided he wanted to do something. He needed to remember his friend, and so he created this foundation, the Run for the Fallen Foundation. And that first summer in 2008, he and Michael Cleary's sister and fiance and other friends ran across America. They mapped it out where they left California and went to Arlington Cemetery. Same number of miles as the people who had been killed in Afghanistan and Iraq, oh, wow. which was a little over 4,700 at the time. The number's now over 6,000, so but they mapped it out and along the way they each mile they had a flag and a little bio just like we have the cards with the bio and the photo and they planted those along the way 
And then John, he wanted to keep that up. He, he thought, you know, this really needed to be something that we needed to continue to do, but they couldn't run across America all, every single summer. And so they started enlisting people in each state to do runs. There was a woman in Charleston named Vivian Bales, and she was a runner, and she met John Bologna, and he asked her to start an event. So the first one here was in 2010. Oh, wow. That's a good story. I didn't know all the background. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. One of the things I wanted to ask about, since both of you are, you interact with veterans more than, more than others, I would assume, how should people come up to a veteran and introduce himself and thank them? And is there a proper way that you think is best? Uh, well, it's tricky because yeah. um, I, I will tell you, someone that served with my son said one time, he said, it makes me very uncomfortable. He said, I went over to Afghanistan, but he said, I, you know, nothing happened to me. And I just, my father was a veteran who landed on Omaha Beach on D-Day. He said, I feel embarrassed when someone says that to me when I think about people like your father. I, 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 I try to tell him and other people try to tell him, you served, you know, and that's, that's really the important thing. You were willing to do whatever it took. Um, but I think it's just, it's just a matter of just be polite, say thank you for your service. And if they want to engage you in other conversation, do, but. Okay. Would you like? I, what day this yeah. what day this week i coming out of walmart older gentleman american legion cap from marcola well you know i can't pass between this one being from marcola it, i just stopped and we spoke and i just said thank you for your service oh you're welcome and i said where did you serve and he says well and he went into the story and his memory was fresh and you know and, and he told me about his father having served and the buddies that he lost and i just let him talk you know now i do the younger ones sometimes i think they're a little Apprehensive? Yeah. Uh, they don't want any glory. Yeah. Uh, but Carolyn and I have said it do. a million yes. times. Yeah. My dad, who served in Korea, her dad, who landed on Omaha Beach, that those generations didn't talk about their service. They that did you just come home and went on with their lives. Now, my grandson, who you well know, yeah. says to me one time, Grandma, you always, if you see a veteran, you always make your way over and say, you know, thank you for your service. He says, but you're just playing nuts if you see a Vietnam veteran. You, you go out of your way to, to thank them. And I said, because they didn't get it when they came home. And I guess that's the good news. His generation has no idea that at one time we forgot how to treat servicemen. You know, whether we like the war or not, it, the yeah. men got caught up in it. So, yes, I do go out of my way to thank the, the Vietnam veterans. Um, but, but I think if you just say thank you and sort of play it from the air. If they it, say, it is. You know, yeah. most of them will say, you know, it was my duty or, you know, various things. But and if they want to talk, I, now I <laughs> I will stand and talk to them if they want to talk to me. So. Yeah, yes, I, yes. I want to, yes. to talk about that because I think it's interesting yeah. and gives people a little background on maybe what to do and what not to do. Um, for the for the Run for the Fall event, which is coming up in just a few weeks here in Charleston, uh, are you still looking for volunteers or do you have any needs we out there? We have enough volunteers. We've done this so many times now. You know, everybody just kind of comes and does their thing now. So, um, But it's a very simple event too i just want to reiterate that um can you, people come and sit in the stands and watch yes absolutely we do have maximum forte uh the choral group from charleston high school will be singing the national anthem at 9 30 in their excellence so uh, if somebody wants to do you know come when they're doing that that's great they can come and stay all day it's just a it's it's really touching it doesn't maybe sound like it but it's so touching and the other thing i think is great about run for the fallen is so many people want to do something to show their honor, you know, that they want to honor these people, and they don't really have an outlet, and that is what Run for the Fallen gives them. And I like the fact that they can come for five hours or 30 minutes or, you know, however long it takes to, yeah. to be involved. I think that's, oh, people yeah. like that because, you know, everybody's going 100 miles an hour right now. Yeah. Could we give just a little plug to the Charleston High School for letting us yep. use the track? Yes. It, it's such a great surface, you know, to, yeah. to, to walk on. And the Charleston High School teams, some of the EIU teams, they okay. come. And you do you want to be the one to tell it? Or the, the, the girl? Yeah. Um, we had the volleyball team from Eastern one time, and it's just been a couple of years back. And we were given the cards. Of course, there's a bunch of them, so they were waiting for their teammates to get done. And this young girl looks at this card, and she goes, oh, my God, he's my age. Like, it never struck her that these are young people their ages going out and getting killed in these wars and I, I think it really struck a nerve with her so um, that was it's great in my opinion that was our most successful it's, it's year it's great to see the teams come out though and they, yeah, they, come out they are and they'll run together it's great yes so. they do and then and they do multiple laps and we just tell them as they're leaving put it in your locker and every day when you open your locker just mm -hmm. think of that service mm -hmm. member mm -hmm. we're 
I, I believe we have to pass it down to the next generation. Well, I think so. Paying it forward is a big part of my, I, I get it. You always want to leave things better than you, you, you got them, right? Mm-hmm. What got each of you to support events like these? We haven't talked about the other event you're here for, but when we're talking about running for the following, you know, <laughs> what part of, you know, what made you decide to give, Gail? Our dads. Our dads. Our dads I was going to say. They, <laughs> ta- they taught us to be patriots and uh, to care, and, and we, know, we know what it means to serve. And, and I grew up during Vietnam. Dad obviously had already served. My two uncles, one of whom was in Vietnam, the other was in Korea, when, where my dad was. We were diametrically opposed to that war. But their point was, your nation called, you answered. I think my job is to keep my you know, to keep my government in check. And, and I didn't support the war, but I never thought it was the boys' fault. And so I just, I, I, my da- I respect for, for my dad, for her dad, for my uncles. You know, it, that wasn't ever part of the equation. That was always first and foremost. I respect that, and I, wa- I want to pass it to the next generation. I want them to carry that on. And, it, and it's just, you know, Gail and I both lost sons. They were in the military, but they were, um, they were not military accidents. They were at home. We know what it means to have someone remember them. And so I think it means even more to us to help people remember other people's sons and daughters. Um, no one can give them their children back. But my God, you know, if people forget them and what they've done and what they've sacrificed, that's the real shame of it. Yep, I get it. That's a good answer. Well, let's uh, let's uh, switch to the Coles County um, Historical Society's Depot Museum exhibit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what it is and where people can see it, times and things like that. Well, we're open. Let's get this out of the way. It's mm-hmm. at the depot in Mattoon, and we're open one to four on Saturdays. But we will give them private tours if they can't make it. So they can just give me a call. I'm on Facebook. If people know me, I can give you my phone number. Um, uh, we want people to get in there and see these stories. So it's just a collection of items that we had in our archives and things I had and she had. And then we've had this great experience since we opened up. We've had people come in every week and said, hey, I've got such and such. Would you like that? That's so how, it's yeah. growing and growing. It's been, we, we got, I'll tell, tell you about Charles Blakesley Hall, who, <laughs> who went to school here at Eastern. And if you're not familiar with this story, it was the late 30s, and I'll try and make this very short. Oh, you're good. He joined up and became a pilot, and he became one of the first 43 Tuskegee Airmen. And then he became the first black man to shoot down an enemy plane and to get the Distinguished Flying Cross. So we did a storyboard. We didn't have any artifacts, but we did a storyboard. We wanted to tell his story, and it's hanging there. And then we had a Coles County uh, Historical Society event, and uh, President Gatrell and Judy Gorell came, and some other people from Eastern. I don't mean to not say their names, but the next day Judy called, and she said, hey, we've got this G.I. Joe doll that is in the likeness of Charles Blakesley Hall. Would you like to put that on display? So now that's in our museum. Yeah, we're just so excited. So That's cool. Uh, We have historical things from the Civil War, both World Wars, Korea, and Vietnam. We've done nothing post 9-11 because we're out of room. Uh, Some of them are just historical things, like from the Civil War, where, you know, obviously we can't even, we don't even know anybody that far back that knows somebody, okay? So they're just historical things. Letters and letters and things. Cannonballs. But there, we have been so blessed with artifacts, treasures from people who are we have a link to just like Charles Barkley okay he or Blake Slate, Blake Slate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like okay okay he was just here at EIU but the connection is still very real he was track star and football, football star, star yeah. you know the, the connection is still very real we have people he worked at Ike's you know it was Ike's <laughs> little campus so yeah. Ike's yeah. is still there and and when you can touch that history we have um, Dick Lumpkins military uniform from World War II. Oh, wow. He was a civilian non-combatant, and so we have his now, uniform. Wait, it's not, it's not Richard. Richard. It's Richard. Okay. It's Richard Addison, his grandfather, not yeah. Dick. But anyway, it, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's local. It's here. It's, and we have all these stories to tell if I have just. No, we have plenty of time. Okay. Don't worry about that. So um, there's a young man. This kind of started it really all for me, putting displays together. There was a young man who was from Mattoon. And he was serving, and he got and he got drafted in World War II, and he had just started dating this young woman from Mattoon. And this was in um, 
1944. So he came back from training, married her in September. He was home for two weeks. They bought her ring on time. We've got this little booklet that's got their payments in it. And so he left. He knew he was getting shipped out overseas. And so his wife was saving some money to go see him before he left. She was going to go to New York to visit him. And her mother stole the money out from under her mattress and said, you don't need to go see him anyway. So she didn't get to see him. He shipped out, and he got killed in January in uh, oh, the Battle of the Bulge. And so his wife got his flag from his coffin, I mean, of these various items, his purple heart, and she just put them all in the bottom of a trunk, and that's where they stayed until she passed away a few years ago. And her children brought him to the VFW in Mattoon and said, you know, we've got these things, it's not our dad, so there's really no reason for us to hang on to them. Do you have something you can do with it? And they said yes, and then they gave them to me and said, can you do something with it? <laughs> and I said, I will always do something with this. We'll always have it on display. We'll always tell a story. So that's what we do when we're in there, too. We go from case to case. If people want us to, we will tell them all of these stories because we think that's what's really important and for how how generous to those girls they, it, he, he could have been their dad but fate yeah. had other plans and so the mother remarried but to to appreciate their worth and to, to seek out somebody that would take care of him so that his story didn't die yeah, because he didn't live long enough to have his own children he was 19 years old holy cow yeah. and every one of those soldiers has some story. Yes, and, and we'll just tell all of them if we can. <laughs> so. so, so basically, if yes. people have been bringing by stuff yes. to, to you. Is there other stories like that, or yeah, are, well, are artifacts that people will really need to see? Actually, we think they need to see all of them. I mean, there really are some excellent artifacts, but I, we need to give a shout out to the Highland family. Mick Highland came the first week we were open. And then he's like, well, I've got some stuff. Do you want it? So, and he said, Man, I'm going to tell all my friends and my brothers. So um, he came back the next week with gas mask and the week after that with his brother Jimmy's jungle boots, which his brother Jimmy was a tunnel rat in Vietnam. Four of the Highland brothers served in Vietnam. And um, so there was that. And there was one guy, I just have to laugh because he brought stuff to my office and he said, yeah, I'm bringing this by because Mick Highland told me I had to and he won't leave me alone until I do. So. <laughs> Um, but somebody came then just the other day with a, a light anti-tank weapon that he said, it was a, kind of the same thing. He said, Bill Highland loaned this to me, but he said, Bill called me up and said, bring it back and take it over to the depot. <laughs> and the, the Highland display is not complete because they don't know it yet, but I, I have insisted with Carolyn, we have to have a picture of Their Mama mother. Highland. Yeah. Any mother that would part with four of her sons to Vietnam is the hero okay yeah. she needs to be in our, our i would think so yeah it kind yeah. of reminds me of the movie uh, uh saving private, saving private Ryan, Ryan, yeah. yeah yeah they Which all was came actually home based on a real story you know yeah. so yeah but these guys all came home and and yeah when you're doing the history to display i mean and people bring you stuff do you go ahead and try to do a little back researching for the oh, accuracy yes, can wait. you take us through that yes um just um i i that stuff is fascinating to me anyway, so I see that stuff, whether it's in somebody else's display or not, and I'm going to look it up. But I think that's part of what we have a duty to do there is do the research so that, so that people know what these stories are. And the other things, the personalization, it's not just history then. It's more memorable when they can say, oh, her mom stole her money. Oh, she never got to see her, her husband of two weeks, you know. Well, and I, I think when you hear those personal stories, I mean, I am interested in military history, but if you tell some people, you know, this is what happened on these days and there was this battle, blah, 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 that may not be something that strikes them as much as if you say, this is Orville Harrison and he was 19 years old and, you know, he shipped out without seeing his wife again and she had to finish paying off her wedding ring because he was killed in the Battle of the Bulge. That touches people. Yeah. I'm going to ask a dumb question. Like you said, when she was painted off, was it a jewelry store people would recognize the name? or I mean, Well, I I would simply because you, Hanif's, or Hamptons. Uh, Hamptons. Hamptons. Okay, I don't remember that. Hanif's. Name, so. Hamptons. It, it, you know Lori Garvey? Lori and Al Garvey? I know, I know the name. I don't know okay. personally. Yeah. Lori, I, I'm, pretty, I'm positive it was Lori's parents, and it was down on Broadway, maybe in the... I think it was the 1500 block. Some, so it's kind of where there's always been jewelers yes, in that yes, area. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So they just, and we have the little booklet yeah. where they made the payments and then she finished paying it off. And Wow. That's a good story. Any other stories that you want to share? We have about eight minutes left today. We're talking to Carolyn Cloyd and Gail Bainey. I just, if we can switch back from the museum when you were asking about volunteers, we, we, we're just the two sillies. We have a great committee. 
Um, C Cecilia Livesey is one of them, uh, Cheryl Smith, Brenda Smith, and Minnie Monsell. And that's our core unit. And we div divvy up the tasks. When, when I started this 14 years ago, I dragged all of them along. So, um, you know, they, they kind of just come and do their thing. They know exactly what they're it's, doing. It's how many people are like, on, on the Saturday when they run for fall, how many volunteers are there out there? Um, at any given time, maybe, uh, I, I, there's, there's uh, what, the six of us, seven of us. Um, we'll have a couple will come and go. You know, some people will come and help us put up tents and take stuff down and the ROTC from EIU usually uh, brings water the trough and some ice and so I should probably let them know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's August 19th. well last year we couldn't get a hold of them till the very last minute and I think that's why it's not on my radar yeah. but they always yeah. they always help with that um, the city of Charleston actually sponsors it for us so you know they come and open up and uh, lock up and everything so there's a lot of people but and in 2020 Miss Cloyd here figured out a website, how to do the whole <laughs> nine yards, and we did it virtually. We, we weren't sure if there'd be a, a good reaction, but there absolutely was. There's yeah. all the flags, and that's, yeah. that's how we track how many miles have been run on that day. We count the flags, and we counted a good day. We've got to have enough that every, every service member gets run for at least one time. If you want to watch that about on, if you're listening on radio, we actually air the show on our TV stations too. And funny thing, I'm going to go back to Carolyn. On Carolyn, I think I, on Thursday, I go, can you send me a couple photos? Of, so we, it's, it's, it's good for the TV broadcast. And about two seconds later, I had like 25 photos. It was, you know, that, and that, which shows the kind of person you are. You immediately, so it makes it look better on TV and it also gives it some perspective when people watch it as well. So yeah, if you're yeah. wondering, so it's interesting. Well, um, so counting those flags, that's a chore for our volunteers, but um, <laughs> we the very first year we did it, um, our big thing was, will we have enough people? There were a little over, I think there was 215 uh, Illinois service members who had died in Afghanistan and Iraq that At year. At that time. And yeah. we were like, oh my gosh, we want everyone to be you know, represented. Will this happen? Will there be enough people? We might be running from now for six weeks to just cover these, <laughs> but we had 600 and some miles that first year, and it's been... Generally, it's been over 800 miles every single year. There's been a few where it's fluctuated a little, but even the year of COVID when we did it virtually, and which was really, I mean, we love the in-person event. I think other people do, but it was great because people would take a picture, you know, here we are, we did our five miles, and so we tracked everybody that way. Now, do you have goals this year about how many people you'd like to see or miles you'd like to see ran? Um, I would just really like to keep the momentum going. That's kind of every year we sit back and go, okay, are we going to do it again this year? Mm, you know, it, I guess if some year 10 people show up, we'll know maybe. Like you said when we first started, everybody, nobody intends to forget, but life goes yeah. on. And so we do. Is this a year that we're obsolete is this too many years well you got to get to next year because next year's 15. yes yeah. so, so yeah. far it, so far it well, has not and, been and the other thing is is too we've had over the years people um, one guy came one year early on and he said do you care if i run for my buddy i lost in vietnam technically this is for people lost in iraq and afghanistan but you, if you see on my shirt i've got a couple um got i've got my dad i've got her dad i've got a guy from arcola who died in 1943 we'll run for them too but then we also run for the you know the people who died in that afghanistan. makes sense we, we won't turn anybody away it's just about and remembering when they've come and said you know i want to run for my brother who died in vietnam we try and get a name and a little information and at least have some form of card for them if they come back the next year. Ordinarily, we only maintain cards on the yeah. post 9-11 service members, but but anybody can run. Has We're, anybody done it all 14 years besides you? I mean, do you know? Um, um, I don't you mean you helping? Yeah, help okay. her, all, 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 all the committee. Brenda, Cheryl, Mindy, uh, Gail, and, and my sister, and they sister. have. Because yeah. like I say, I dragged, Bill Lair got me involved the first year. Hey, can you do a couple things? And so when I came along, they all they all came along. Like we just know stuff. a good time when we see it. Yeah. And so I want to go back to the uh, museum exhibit just for a second. Is, uh, um, it's open on uh, Saturdays, 1 to 4. 1 to 4. And how long? I mean, how many more months will it stay open? Or we, it will be at least another year if it continues to be popular and it continues to grow. It, it might be in there longer. So. Have, have any veterans stopped by to take we, a look? Yes. Can yeah, you quite talk a few, about those ex actually. experiences? I think that would be awe inspiring for them. So um, the Highlands, of course, uh, yeah. we had a woman that was in there a couple weeks ago. Um, she, she was a veteran. Um, actually, every I would say every week we've had a veteran, at least one veteran, come through there, at yep. least. Uh, Do you remember any of what they said or their thoughts? or? 
Um, most of them just, you know, they just kind of look at the things, look at them, I, I would say, I don't, they look at the things. Um, unlike if their spouses come or other people come, they'll talk a lot about, oh, you know, that's whatever, sad, or thanks for telling us that. They're just like, oh, and a lot of times they will say, well, when I was over there, blah, blah, blah. And I think that I, I like that aspect just as much as anything. If they will talk to us, hopefully it's a good experience for them. Okay. We have a couple of minutes left today talking to Carolyn Cloyd and Gail Bainey about Run for the Fallen and the museum exhibit in Mattoon. Any other thing that I forgot that you'd like to talk about today before um, we can go on to another subject in our, the chamber or my world-famous eight questions that are unrelated? Anything? Oh, let's do the let's do the world famous questions. Right, um, real quick, we can talk about stuff forever, but yeah. you would run for the fallen dates again. Just it is date. August nineteenth, and it is from seven a.m. to one p.m. at the Charleston High School track. The exhibit it's open when? It's open on Saturdays, one to four. It's in the lower level at the Mattoon Train Depot, or, or by, by request. Or by request, if you call me at two one seven two three five four nine eight four. There you go. I will get you in. All right, we'll go. Uh, we'll go, Carolyn, and then Gail in order. So, favorite historical movie. Favorite historical movie. Um, um, mm, mm. That's very tough for me. Um, <laughs> oh Lord, I'm glad you got oh, that I one. Know. Oh my gosh, that's so difficult. Um, can I can, can, yeah, well, you, can you come back to me? <laughs> well, the thing that comes to my mind immediately, and it's so silly, in the movie The Hellfighter, Hellfighters with uh, John, John Wayne and he comes they're putting out wildfires you yeah. know in texas and he goes after equipment and the big plane comes in and the tailgate well i don't not a tailgate but it comes down and john wayne is just standing in this cavernous opening and it just screams america it just screams yeah we got it All right. <laughs> well i guess i it's so hard to narrow that down i will say let's just go with saving private ryan let me just say that because my dad landed on omaha beach on D-Day, and so that, that first scene, as horrific as it was, I felt like it gave me a little insight. But it also, that story, although they changed the names, it actually was a, you know, it was based on a true story of some, some young men that were from New York, so okay. um, that, that touches me greatly. And that scene where they go, where the, the mom actually even just sees the car and coming down the road, the and stuff, I yeah. start sobbing from that moment on, and it's all she wrote, Absolutely. So, yeah. We're not going to get through eight with this one, because yeah. we only got a, minute, a little under a minute to go. Historical place you like, either of you like to visit? Any place you like to Washington, D.C.? Normandy. Right, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. We're yeah. going to do that. That's on the bucket list. If you could go to breakfast with anyone, alive or dead, who would it be? My son. <laughs> I, I couldn't argue with that logic. Now, what about somebody that's like um, military or leader or anything? Um, oh, my gosh. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Colonel, Colonel Soria in yeah. <laughs> at the Pentagon, um, which would, was the National Guard commander when our boys were in the National Guard, and she's okay. now at the Pentagon. And I'd go to, I'd go to uh, breakfast with her. Yeah, I would, uh, I you got about like two seconds here. Dick Winters from uh, Band of Brothers. I would love to have... Even two minutes with him. We are WEIU. Thank you guys so much.